we <laughs> arrive, right? And we're like, whoa, we get to this hotel. Mm. When we get to the hotel, we notice that there are maybe 40 military police around the hotel. We're like, wow. A fenced off community. Like, we, we, no, we were like, wow, who the hell is here? What's going on, like? You can't just show me that and then just kind of go, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you, what? How did that happen then? What? <laughs> like... Listen, there's too many stories, babe. <laughs> Let's just keep it moving. <laughs> Let's do it, man. All right, I'm here. For okay, it. so no, Nelson. Okay, <laughs> we, were, we knew we should never have messed with a magician. <laughs> Why did we mess with a magician? It took us twelve hours to get home. Yeah, from Bradford as well. Twelve hours from Bradford. All right, then, welcome to the show, Long Drives, Late Nights and Lobby Calls. This is a podcast uh, to do with the realities of the live music industry uh, and some of the real stories from the people on stages to everyone else behind the scenes. I am your host, Lewis Left, and today I'm serving you, Kwame Quatton. Say hello, Kwame. Hey, baby. <laughs> just for everybody who is uh, just using the audio and not using the visual, Kwame's mug actually says, don't fuck it up. Which is just that's what my that's what my mug says. <laughs> Whatever you do, just don't fuck it up. <laughs> so uh, I was introduced to Quam back in two thousand eighteen, seventeen, something around through, there. Through the through the magic of the influence, indeed. Um, uh, so for people that don't know, because let's be honest, you've been living under a rock otherwise. So, Quam, you are the music, the uh, managing director of Ferocious Talent. Woo-hoo! Yes. <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> Vice chair of the music managers forum. Yeah. Obviously, uh, an integral part of the influence. And Woo-hoo! I mean, this like I was watching TED, TED talks, A and R of Point Blank Music School, Trusty Brit Trust, and um, Mobo. Every like. Come on, this this is crazy. This is why I'm nervous as well, because like I look up to you anyway. And when I started, and obviously I'm a I'm a fresh faced boy. Um, and then when I was working with DI DI and stuff, I was like, yeah, this is cool, man. This is sick. And then when I actually like went back and then listened to the back catalogue and everything, I was just thinking, fuck, mental. Yeah, and man. It's crazy. It's so some of the some of the some of the stuff. I remember <clears throat> Sarah telling me a story once of back in South America somewhere where you guys were touring with, or I think you might have been doing it by yourselves or with someone and in Brazil or maybe somewhere in South America mm. and um, someone nicking your passports and Maura just chasing them through a hotel lobby or something. <laughs> Listen, man, we got stories. <laughs> you have. This is why. We got stories. Listen, I can tell you what happened. It's absolutely true. It's so funny. <laughs> right. My, my, what happened was, we were, as we were, you know, it's like a funk band on the road, really, right? Yeah. So we gigged everywhere, you know, we'd gig. We gig big, huge places, Wembley yeah. Stadium. But then at the same time, we'd play a postage stamp. Yeah. Like in a hotel lobby, you know what I mean? We, yeah. So we did a lot. We did a lot of gigs everywhere. That was us. Yeah. And um, it's an amazing time. And it's still, I just still, obviously, I love gigging with Dean Friends. Oh, like um, some of the best shows I think I've ever done. Yeah, I love it, love it. Yeah. But, um, you know, we also, you know, what, so we imagine we've gone over to South America and they've told mm. before. And uh, how it goes is, is that we were doing a show. Yeah. And it was a, a place called, I think, the Old Trout in Windsor. Okay. And um, when we got there, our manager just said, listen, just make sure on this one that, you you know, you put in a performance. And we were like, oh, all right, all right. Cool. no worries. <laughs> well, we even say, well, we, we like, don't do it before. We're like, no. What are we, we going to do? You're still going to do it. It's all right. 150 people, right? We're like, okay, cool. Sweet spot. 200 maybe. And we're like, yeah, no worries. We'll do it. So we did the show and we we had a blast, a whale of a time. It's great. Mm. Really good show. Really happy. Whatever. Mm. Fine. What then happens is that we then meet up with this guy 
Chris Rowley, who is a, a, a sort of tour booker. Right. And he's something to do with the British Council. And he comes up to us and says, listen, the British Council have had a dropout. Somebody has fallen out. They were going to do a tour and they're not going to be able to do it anymore. Mm. Could you do it? And yeah. we're like, where? And they said, uh, it's a, a two-month tour and it's of South America. <laughs> And we're like, sign us up, mate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Let's go. So, you know, <laughs> we'll go they sort it out. Sort it out. They said, everything's paid for. Flights, really? blah, this, that, whatever. They said, you're going to be flying between gigs, mm. you know, and uh, whatever, you know. So we were like, great. They said, also, there's cultural exchange as well. So, you know, you do a show and then maybe two days mm. you spend in that area just yeah. learning a bit about it, doing some exchange with some of yeah. the the people, local people, and then you move on and really do another show. Stuff. Yeah, fantastic. And they said, listen, as well, they said, some of the uh, the mm. places that you're going to be playing, they said they've had no one there, you know, funk-wise, they've had no one, soul funk, they've had no one there since Nothing. James Brown. So you, so they're going to be since, blown away by the influence. Since That's James it. Brown. And then they said, let's just come. So we were like, all right, you know, listen. So we get over there, and when we do, we do... Brazil. So we did mm. 12 shows across Brazil, right the way, length and breadth of Brazil, right? And then wow. we come and fly over and we go to Colombia. Uh-huh. Okay. And um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We go to Colombia. Right. Yeah. And Colombia, Colombia is a whole other situation. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's cool, mm. edgy. Yeah. Back yeah. then, I don't know uh-huh. if anybody's seen any of the documentaries on Netflix about how <laughs> Colombia was <laughs> back in the day. How Columbia but I can works. tell you, yeah. all I can tell you is listen. The truth of it is, it's a, it's a lovely place, but obviously mm. back then, as many countries do, yeah, of course, Colombia was going through its own isms and schisms. Mm. England yeah, went yeah. through its own isms and schisms. Please, in the sixties, the craze were everywhere. It was you know, was, yeah, like, yeah, on. yeah, things, yeah. Things so everybody, things, everybody yeah. It's cyclical, right? And different countries mm. have their time. So Colombia th- was a time, right? Yeah, we're we talking <laughs> 92. It was fresh. And yeah. uh, we 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 arrive, <laughs> right? And we're like, whoa, we get to this hotel. Mm. When we get to the hotel, we notice that there are maybe 40 military police around the hotel. We're like, wow. A fenced off community. Like, come and we, no, we were like, wow, who the hell is here? What's going on? Like, it's us, isn't it? <laughs> and when we get there, they say to us, they say, listen. Oh, because we take someone to one side. We said, well, who's, who's, who's going to be here? What, what's going on? <laughs> They said, listen, they said, it's you, man. We're like, what do you mean it's us? They said, listen, it's you. They said, you've come over with the British Council. Mm. Yeah. And they said, being straight, this government cannot afford for you to be kidnapped. And kidnapping was big then. Right? So we were like, what? So like, so the 45 are for all of us then? So that is basically what the guys, that's what we were told. We were told, look, there are 40, and there were 40, I swear, I swear, there were 40 military police. Mm. M, it's an MP written on their L, no arms. No way, it's not just being warriors, you're talking. No, 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 fully, yeah, yeah. fully garbed out, whatever. <laughs> yeah, you know, guns, the lock, yeah, yeah, whole yeah. straps, everything. Mm. So we were like, rah, okay. <laughs> so we, 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 um, uh, we're there and we're there, mm. we do Bogota, we do Cali. Okay. And I think we we are that we come back to Bogota maybe and do a show. Mm-hmm. And when we when we when we're doing the show, my missus flies out. Brilliant. Uh and because you know, I just you know, we, I, I I always I love having my missus yeah, you know, yeah, around yeah. And so she comes over, we you know, we she comes over. And she lands, and um, she when she lands, she comes in, she tells, she says, listen, you know, uh, she comes by and she said, listen, I had the hairiest, hairiest ride, she said, to really? the hotel. So she the, said, yeah, because- Yeah, was one thing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was one thing, mm. but when she got off and she, got, she said, she said, I'll, what I'll do is I'll try and catch a local transport to where I'm yeah. gonna go. All right. And then she said it was too difficult. So she got into a cab and this person started driving mm. her, but he was driving her into some really weird sort of spot space. And right, she was okay. like, this is crazy. So she was like, stop the car, stop the car, yeah, stop yeah, the yeah, car. Yeah, 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 yeah. So she then gets <laughs> out 
And that's universal language, isn't it? Let's be honest. <laughs> she was like, stop that. She gets out and she's like, yo, she said, I'm in the middle of nowhere. Then she manages to catch another cab yeah. and get to the hotel. So getting there was even tricky. She yeah. gets to the hotel. When she got to the hotel, now we're there, we do the show. The show goes really good. It's in this Fantastic. lovely theatre. It was wild. I mean, proper wild nights. Yeah. Right? And... Um, <laughs> and she then says, look, you know, it's one mm. thing, Kwam. I said, what? She said, uh, my flight back comes back the next day. So she said, so I'm going to, I'm going to stay in the hotel and then, and I'll, then I'll, yeah. I'll go to the, you know, airport. And, but I, yeah. she said, I'll be leaving the next day. And I was like, mm. huh? can't I change my tickets? I can come. And she said, look, no, it costs too much. But, mm. And she's a, she's a, you know, my missus is a tough nut. So she was like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, fine, yeah. don't worry. Anyway, <laughs> what <laughs> then happened was that she gets knock on her door. So we've left now. We've gone, we've gone to the airport, blah. That yeah. night, she gets a knock on her door. And um, the guy, basically, somebody knocks and says, listen, you know, I've heard that you've got plumbing to fix and blah, blah, blah. She was like, yeah, 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 I've got the... Because she said, strangely, uh, the shower wasn't working. So she said, yeah, the shower's not working. Can you? Yeah, so he's like, someone, fine, yeah, fine, yeah. come. Anyway, so he comes. She's like, just trying to sort stuff out, blah, blah, she's blah. Even, she's she said, look, really, she yeah. said, yeah, she said, look, I'll, I'll be back and she's whatever. So I think she goes, picks up some things from the foyer, comes back mm. upstairs, blah, whatever. She's like, cool, nice. Mm. And the guy's like, yeah, he says it's fixed now. It's cool, nice. So it's he brilliant. gets up. Sweet, yeah. Oh, lovely. <laughs> she looks on the bed and she goes, hold on. She goes, my bag. Where's my, where's my, what? She looks in the bag, empties mm. it. All of cool. her stuff's not there. Fantastic. Passport. Everything, nah. keys, passport, yeah. blah, this, that, yeah. money. Oh, gone. Essential <laughs> to return home. She's like, yeah. She's okay. like, what? She's like, I am catching that plane. She's like, right. <laughs> so she opens the door and runs down the hot, the, <laughs> down the corridor. Now these are long 50 style hotels, 1950s, 1960s. Shining. Cubana yeah, yeah. styles, mm -hmm. like the shining. She's yeah. running down this hotel, right? <sighs> and she gets to the top and there's this spiral staircase that goes down to the bottom mm. and she's right at the top of there and this guy he's still in the overalls right no has way got this, he's got this briefcase on him and she's oh. like you've yeah. got my money <laughs> you've got my money and she, he's like what she's like <laughs> you've got my money give it to me no and she <laughs> grabbed the case mm. flicks open the sides yeah, so it opens is, it. It's gone. Her passport's there and her money. She grabs it, mm. flings the case back at him, mm. and he runs off. <laughs> and it was only when she got back to the uh, room that she mm. went, the adrenaline, like, it properly then, kicked in. Yeah. And she was just like, oh, my God. I'm in Colombia. <laughs> and and I've just taken on a man that's bigger than me yeah, and got back my passport and my money. So yeah. she called me up. I think, no, I spoke to her. What, before I she remember left, speaking or? to her. Yeah, I remember speaking to her before she left because, mm. and she told me and I was like, oh my God. Because you're, because where, where would you and, be at and, this point? And no, she, this is it. I remember now. I was back, we were in London. Ah. And, she actually had two nights to stay. No. If way. I remember rightly. So she had so you, that night. No, then, it was either, either she had two nights or she had one night she, mm, and I spoke to her. Mm, and then she said that same night, she had another knock on the door and she's like, I'm not that, opening it. Yeah, get out. What but are you talking open, about? That was it. So yeah. Mental. Mate. Mate, what? Roller Cheers. coaster, yeah. <laughs> Roller Cheers. coaster of emotion, yeah, yeah. Roller coaster of emotions. Cheers, Quam. Yeah, mate. I remember. Yeah, man. I'm still with the same woman. Yeah, more. So more, there you more go, babies. Yeah. <laughs> Probably, yeah. 
in, insane, insane. I've been lucky enough to to meet you and obviously your family and everything. Love Supreme. No, we didn't. Love Supreme wasn't the last one. No, it was a couple. It was a show up in London. I can't remember. I can't it remember was, was it like Nels or something. Nels, that was it. Yeah, might yeah, have been was... Nels or mm. we did. We did one more jazz cafe, I think. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know if I was we'll there, remember, but it was fantastic. It's all good. With so picture this then, yeah. So you've gone out for you've gone out for drinks, and you can invite up to two people, living or deceased. Who are you well, inviting, and why? How much time are you allowed to spend with them? So it's an evening shebang. So let's say you've gone out at. You know, you've eaten, you've gone out at 7, 8, and you're not back to the a.m. Okay, I've got two replies. I've got two. (laughs) I love it. So my first reply, my first reply, honestly, because both of my parents, my parents both passed away when I was young. So my mum passed away when I was 18. My dad passed away when I was seven. So my first answer is my mum and my dad. I'd love to have both of them in Mm -hmm. a place and just chat to them about shit. Yeah. You know? Shits oh, and giggles, bomb. just to chat with them about stuff, life, yeah. and the cosmos. Yeah, you know, the inside. I would love, 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 because I know that my dad, and obviously I wouldn't say shit in front of my mum or dad, <laughs> but I would. But I, I hope you're listening, both of you in heaven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, that's the situation. Mm. So that's the first. Okay. But really, wow, I would. Probably, and this is going to sound crazy, mm-hmm. but one of the people that I would love to have <laughs> some kind of uh, dinner with, Nelson Mandela. Oh, no way. Everyone who is listening, you will not be able to see this, but Kwame is showing me a signed picture from, from the man Nelson. himself. From the man yeah, himself. Yeah. Absolutely. So Nelson Mandela, I'd love to just literally sit, just have a chat with him. Okay. Bam. Just to, just to pause you. How you can't just show me that and then just kind of go. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you? What? <laughs> how did that happen, man? What? <laughs> like... Listen, there's too many stories, babe. <laughs> Let's just keep it moving. Let's do it, man. All right, I'm here. For okay. It. So no, Nelson. Okay. Hmm. So basically, I we one of the things that we okay, I co-run a company. It's a social enterprise company called Creating Vision. Spelled okay. C R E eight, the number eight. Yeah. I N G V I S I O N. So Creating Vision, and mm-hmm. I co-run it with Andrea and Nikki, Andrea Yule and Nikki Charles. Fantastic. And it does seminars on the music industry, okay. panels on the music industry, industry talks, industry A and R focus groups, industry mentoring. So it basically teaches you everything you want to know about the music industry, right? So um, one time we started, when we first, when I first started doing them, we started doing them and it was called the Urban Music Seminar back in the day. So it was 1997 when I first started doing them. It's called the Urban Music Seminar. Um, And then we ran from there, 97 to 2004, 2005. Mm -hmm. And then we started again. But you know, the 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 change the name and it, the ultimate seminar had oh had, yeah Please had help. reached a point where it was beginning to really really sort of anyway. All I can say is, <laughs> when we were doing one of these, and I just have to check, I've got to make sure what happened was this: we we in two thousand and nine. Mm-hmm. We had started the um, we had started the ultimate seminar, and we just put in a request. We were like, you know what? We'll just put in a request, and we'll put the request in. In fact, I think it was before two thousand and nine. Mm-hmm. I think it might have been for the seminar itself, but we put in a request in for Nelson Mandela to come and do opening, and we had heard that basically he was coming to England. Oh, so you were like, so, if you're already so, on we your were way, like, you know what? This would be a great thing. So, and um, we had somebody in his camp that mm-hmm. we were talking to that were basically just said, listen, he's really interested in doing it. 
Wow. So we had, we had had, you know, literally, yeah. they said, no, he's interested in doing it and blah, 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 and he might be coming over and yada, yada. We were like, yo! <laughs> Just at this point, oh basically, then he had started to get kind of ill. Okay, yeah. So they then responded back about two, three months later and said, listen, it's not, it's not going to happen. Okay, fair enough. They were like, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Mm. And and so um, then the guy came to the UK, not Nelson Mandela, but the guy that we were in contact with as part of his team. Of course. And basically just said, he couldn't make it, Kwam. Oh. But, but we've, got a, we've got something for you from him. And I was like, what? <laughs> they said, in fact, they didn't say that. This is what they said. They said, <laughs> I brought something for you. They said, it's more important than a lot of things. I was like, what? They said, Put it this way, to you, it'll be more expensive than gold. And I was wow. like, really? I said, what are you talking about then? And they came and they literally just put it in my hand. They said, wow. go. They said it's from Nelson. And there you go. Wow. That's Look the- at that. <laughs> Beautiful. So, yeah. So that's the vibe. So, wow. um, so, but that was yeah. Nelson Mandela definitely won. Yeah. And I think I would say probably. And this is alive or passed away, right? Anyway. Yeah, living or deceased. I'd probably well, I'd probably go for Miriam Makiba, South African singer. Oh, fantastic. I'd probably go for her as well, because she uh, she's just she's just superwoman. So yeah, <laughs> I just two those two. I would uh-huh. I'd love to both of them together. Oh my god, you'd be amazing. Well, this is it. They this would is it. literally they You've... would be able to ping pong, yeah, like the time, what it was like in South Africa, all of that stuff. By the way, I'm half South African, in case you have, yeah. so <laughs> I'm half Ghanaian and I'm half South s- African. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's what I'd love to just find out because I always, my mother would never, she would never let me go to South Africa because okay. when she was alive, you know, apartheid. Mm, was it? Yeah. You know I mean, it was, yeah. it was still a thing. So it's she was thing. just like, she was like. She used to say to me, Kwam, she said, if you go to South Africa, mm. she said, you with your mouth, she said, you'll end up in too much trouble. <laughs> but, and I mean, obviously you've been to South Africa, but you, you mm. went, you went, um, I mean, one of the DI gigs I missed was South Africa. Mate, how Holy, did you miss that show? I can't believe what, I don't know what I was doing. I was definitely, I was working elsewhere. And I remember, Bro. I remember Paz telling me he was like, I left the hotel just to see what the streets were like. And, it was wild. And he just said, then I came back. He was like, it wasn't worth it. <laughs> you know, like, you know, he just said it was, it was, it was a different, different experience. So, and a great oh, no, no, no. Uh, listen, we had a bloody amazing time. Absolutely. And I would say to counter pass, I would say, because we ended up, oh, you know, we went, we went to yeah. Nelson Mandela's house yeah. out there. It was brilliant. Yeah, I remember Graham amazing. saying, Graham telling me loads of stuff. I mean, shout out Graham Peacock. You know, he's the reason why I know you. But and he said it was just, he, he said for him personally, he was there going, oh, oh, like I'm suddenly realizing a lot of stuff. And Graham is someone who I look to, yourself included, yeah. as just wisdom, you know, a fountain of wisdom type of thing. So for Graham to say that, I'm like, oh man. No, man, it was amazing. What mm. we learned and everything and the audiences and the crowds and, yeah, you the know, you're out stage. there, you're supporting Erica Badu. And like, mm. it's mad. The whole thing was crazy. It's great. More wild times on the DI ride. I mean, it's great. <laughs> really good. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I think um, the, 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 main, the main chunk, the main squeeze of this show is because I kind of love... I love touring, but I love more when people lose that kind of wall of of thinking they're the kind of not the ego that comes with touring, but I mean I think more with like tour managers and sound engineers and stuff. There's always there's no they never ever let on the like I tell you this one time I messed up real bad and it was funny. I'm I'm all oh, about please. that. I'm all about that. And for yourself as well, you know, you're not just a musician, you're a, a you're a huge like <clears throat> person behind the music industry as well. So I'm loving I'm I'm loving the fact that I'm just getting to speak to you about and I'm going to plug you for some more disaster stories from along the road. Oh no worries, but got I, I just think I just don't know where you want to where you'd want to home in on. I mean, you can talk DI, you can talk ferocious talent. You know, there's 
there's just been i mean i'm trying to think if there's only been some hairy moments with the gigs that i've done with you guys i think they've always been they've always been great it's always just been like yeah we just turned up we did it there was a lot of prep but it, you know like, well, apart from, do you remember Germany? I don't know if you were at that one, though. <gasps> Germany? Oh, mate, I was, I was kicking Sarah's door. Yeah, 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 To get because she fell asleep twice. Sarah Sorry. fell asleep. Yeah, and then you Sarah fell asleep. Fell, no. I fell asleep, but she fell asleep. She <laughs> fell asleep. But it wasn't just that. It was also that the keyboard player, do you remember? Steve. Steven. Steve. We oh. hit him up and we're like, yo, where are you? And he's like, what? <laughs> and then he's like, we're at the airport, dude. We're like, what are you doing? <laughs> He's like, what? He's like, I'm in what bed. Like, he's like, I'm in bed. Oh my God. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. He said, yeah, don't yeah. worry. I'll get there. And do you know what? He got there. It was funny. We, I think we, I think we were just doing a line check. And then yeah. all of a sudden, Steve just turned up and we, I just was he like, just... me and Matt were like, the slow cat clap. Should we do the slow clap? I don't know how to, how to introduce Ooh. him and stuff. But yeah, that was actually a, f- yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause that was mad for me because I remember that I did that venue when I toured with my dad when I was 16. So that would have been like nine or eight years ago. And then, the guy, the backliner who was doing all of our backline actually works with Calexico or Giant Sand. I can't remember which one, which is what my dad used to tour manage. So it was a, it was a very weird gig. But yeah, I remember running with Sarah. That Because I mean, the hotel, what was two, five minute walk? It was a short walk yeah. down the river to the venue. I remember booting in her door and she's just woken up and just gone, what time is it? And I'm like, we need to get you on stage. And she's like, shit, man. So I'm just there holding her hand. We're like running down this like big... And then, like, you come in, you do your, you know, you do your vibe and you set up and everything. Then the show was, was fantastic. But yeah, it was funny. <laughs> so I was shitting myself. I was like, <laughs> shit, man. We're yeah. Gonna, we're going to do this show. I mean, definitely. There's been some early on in D Influence's career. I remember we had a really, really shabby uh, tour manager. It wasn't Graham, it was, it was someone else <laughs> who I cannot remember his name. And I j- probably deliberately, my mind has put it aside. Mm. And um, it was PTSD just unbelievable. He, this guy, I just remember that whenever he tour managed us, something always went wrong. Right. Like always went wrong. Just a bad, just some bad omen, something following him. Mm. And I always remember there was, there was a couple of things, a couple of brilliant ones. One of them, it was that thing of, okay, uh, we're going to, you know, we get down to the, wherever it was, the premises or blah, we, we, we're we waiting, uh, mm. we're waiting, we're waiting. Finally, he, he shows up and then he said, oh, yeah, we've still got to pick up blah and pick up. So we went and we picked up, we, picked, we were like, why did you, mm. why do you still what? have things to pick up? Yeah. And it was, he was like, no, no, don't worry, we'll make it, we'll make it. We get down and we've got a uh, ferry to catch. Oh. And I remember... He starts driving, he's driving, he's really driving, he's driving, he's driving, he's driving. Then he's speeding up, speeding up. I remember thinking, he's late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, we got, we finally got down. We got down to where the ferry was, and we literally saw the ferry just leave. (laughs) And um, we just turned around to him and we were like, and I remember thinking, I was looking at him and I remember thinking, we're not going to say anything, but he's sack. (laughs) And that was it. Yeah. So I think that was the last gig we did with him. Mm. But um, yeah, there was always something with that gig, and then there was another time where we were at. Um, we had this. Uh, this is <laughs> these are the life and times. We <laughs> we we had we had uh, before we were a full band, mm-hmm. as in an eight piece. We had a, we did a four piece stripped version, and which some of the stuff was on tape and blah mm. and bits and whatever. So we're yeah. like okay. So we go up to Bradford. I remember our agent had just, he was like, just told, listen, just book them some gigs. Yeah. So we've gone up to Bradford to do these, these shows. Okay. And um, we've gone up and we've, we've, the last show we've got to do, and I, I swear I've got a picture, <laughs> right, of the changing room was oh. we had a, the order of the night was a magician, <laughs> then us, then us, and then a Shirley Bassey impersonator who was headlining. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't make it up. No. And, and, no, no. and so we were just like, what? Okay. All right, cool. All right, let's just get on with it. 
But then we were like, hold on a second. So we've gone to the, the person that's booking the chat and we're thinking, well, if we go on first, we'll be able to leave quicker. Yeah. So we go to the person, we're like, listen, 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 please. Can we go on first? Can we go on first? Can we yeah. go on first? Can we go on first? <laughs> and the person's like, well, well, hold on. Let's, let me check with the magician. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Let's see his stage is set up. <laughs> And the magician's like, no, 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 I want to go on. I want to go on and let me go on first. And we were like, no, come on, man. Because, you know, we got we've lost. got all this gear. Yeah. So you a, don't want no. our gear yeah. on the stage while you're, you know. And finally it's... he went, all right. <laughs> anyway. So be it. So we go on stage. We mm. do the performance. Not many people in the house. I remember, you know, oh. the guys, the guy who owned the club in Bradford, Mm. Basically, was saying he said, you know, he gave it the huge big up talk before. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not before yeah. we went on, but just when we came down. He says this yeah. is the best club in Bradford. Blah blah blah. And you're thinking, oh yeah. And I remember on. it was great. I remember looking at him, and this is no word of a lie. <laughs> he had, he was about sixty years old. Uh huh. He had dyed. He had a dyed black perm. Oh. Right? Yeah. Slightly glistening with oil. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and then he had a black shirt on with uh -huh. a white tie and black trousers with a silver belt <laughs> and white shoes. And I remember thinking, this guy is trying to sell me his club. Can you yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so is he the headline? Yeah, headline magician. He said, he said it's the best club in Bradford, the best. Anyway, yeah, so uh, <laughs> we do the performance, we come off stage. And he waves us by. We're like, bye, thanks, bye. <laughs> and we're like, yes, we we're can out. go. So we we're get out. into the, we get into the, uh, there's a lovely, we had a lovely vehicle. But I remember mm. thinking, once again, this was another time with this guy. And I remember thinking, <laughs> you know what? This is, I don't know about, you know, I yeah, hope yeah, this yeah. all goes all right, but we haven't had too much luck with this gent so far. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and of course, he went into the petrol station. We were all right, cool. Yeah, nice one. And he says, I just got to fill up and then we'll be on our way. I was like, cool. Fantastic. Yeah. So he fills up. We get onto the uh, motorway and we're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Suddenly, kong, kong, kong. Oh. And we're like, what? And um, he's like, what? He kind of can't understand. What's, why is it not yeah, working? Yeah, what? Beautiful, lovely, lovely vehicle. I mean, it was beautifully, mm. beautiful, padded out, lovely. And uh, anyway, the AA came down and they said, uh, he's put petrol in a diesel yeah, car. I, oh my God. I, I knew this was going to happen. I just thought, yeah, I'm just nipping out to get some petrol, but I'm going to put the wrong one in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? in a diesel car. So oh. obviously it seized up and then that was that. So, so like in Bradford. now we're in Bradford because oh. we've rushed it. We always believe, me and Sarah to this day, we always said, it was because we messed with a magician. Yeah. He put the hex on us. <laughs> he said, you can have the opening, but yeah, you, you won't can have make the it opening. Home. But yeah. you won't get home, baby. Yeah. So we're like, what the hell? We then, oh man, we finally, right? It took us, and I swear I can laugh about it now, it took us 12 hours to get home. Oh. We did AA relay where they load you off of one bus, off of one vehicle, onto another. Uh, and then they go a little, you know, two hours, an hour, or an hour down, and then they, an hour, and again. they relay. It's great in principle, but in practice. But, no. And the whole nightmare. time, were you able to kind of dish it out to this TM and be like, you know, do you, do you know why their van's running? It's because they've actually put the right diesel in there. Yeah. <laughs> it, was just, it was one of those. No, the funny thing was, was we were in the van, mm. me and Sarah. <laughs> right? We were in this. It was quite a nice, you know, but we were in it. And literally, no one ever like, I think we laughed for 10 of the 12 hours. <laughs> we literally, we're just like, we're just cracking up. We were laughing so much. we Because we were doing impersonations of the magician. We were like, we said to this day, the magician just went, and put some eggs on us. While we were traveling to the place. And I just thought, I'm thinking, we, were, we knew we should never have messed with a magician. Why did we 
rest of the magician. It took us 12 hours to get out. Yeah, from it's Bradford as well. 12 hours from Bradford. Oh. Anyway, so that's the vibe. That was a, a superb, super, superb, superb. I mean, talking talking Bradford and, you know, trying to get a magician, a magician's hex off you and uh, a geezer who's trying to sell you the club. It's the best club in Bradford. Come on, it's the best club in Bradford. It's packed. And you're, there just, going, yeah. you're there going, well, Shirley Bassett, you know, and these two magicians say otherwise. <laughs> Great. Listen, I, I've got full respect for the Shirley Bassett mm. personally because mm. I swear to God, she was so good. Yeah. <laughs> she was so good. We saw her warm up. We were like, damn, this, this woman. Shirley here. Yeah. <laughs> Shirley. She's Shirley like here, right? proper. <laughs> honestly, she really, really was. Honestly, she's really good. So it's her. Mm. As I said, the yeah, this, I don't know, I can't remember his show. But yeah, that was the episode five. Yeah. Fantastic. Whoa there, Pickle. Sorry, I've had to interrupt you. Um, I sat down to edit this episode and there was just no way I could make it the half an hour, 45 minutes. I've had to make it into a two-parter. Now, I hate to be the guy to say, don't worry, part two is coming soon. But don't worry, part two is coming soon. Um, Quan was just an insane guest to interview have on the show um and i hope you're enjoying it so far part two gets even kind of crazier i just yeah it's insane and um look forward to that next week um much love hope you're all well and we'll see you soon justin run that uh, run that outro Long drives, late nights, and lobby calls, this podcast has-